The first of the three indicators we'll be using today to help in determining the bank fold channel width is stream bank shape. I'm here along the edge of the stream bank and you can see in front of me the bed of the channel is relatively flat without much slope. We get to a point here where my hand is where the stream bank gradually begins to climb up to a point where it breaks onto a flat surface. This flat surface right here is the beginning of the active floodplain that we talked about earlier today. The area that you should focus on when looking at stream bank shape is essentially the area between the break and slope, the higher break and slope right here where my hand is, and the lower break and slope down here where the flat channel bed lies. So this area right here is the sloping stream bank and generally what you're looking for is this upper slope break. That helps define where the bank full channel edge really lies. The second indicator we want to talk about for use in determining bank full channel width is vegetation. And specifically we want to talk about the presence and the characteristics of vegetation within the bank full channel as well as outside the bank full channel. Earlier in the, se in the session we discussed the idea that the bank full channel is an area that receives fairly frequent scour from flows. The bank full discharge is a flow that occurs once every few years. So as a result, that bank full channel is relatively free of vegetation and particularly woody or perennial vegetation that grows from year to year. Woody vegetation includes things like salmonberry, willow, alder, or conifer trees that might grow on the floodplain, but you won't find those species growing within the bankful channel. You'll see here in the area next to me, uh, we've got the sloping stream bank. And the channel bed itself is fairly clean. Again, that's the result of the frequent scour that comes through here and, and keeps the vegetation free from growing. On the stream bank itself, we've got some grass and some herbaceous vegetation that grows on an annual basis. Beginning up here at this upper slope break that we talked about earlier, you can see that we've got elderberry growing as well as salmonberry. Elderberry and salmonberry are indicators of perennial woody vegetation. And that's a suggestion that flows, while they may get up here on this floodplain, they don't get up here frequent enough to keep the, the area scoured and free of vegetation. So one of the things that you should look for when using vegetation as an indicator is the presence of such woody or perennial vegetation. Now you can see here over to my right, there's a small alder tree growing on the edge of the channel right here. Alder is another example of perennial woody vegetation that you would not expect to see growing within your bankful channel. So in summary, what you should be looking for when using vegetation as an indicator of bankful channel width is look for perennial woody vegetation because that indicates that you're outside your bank full channel area. In some cases in the summertime during low flows on these gravel bars that you see exposed in front of me you'll see small grass or herbaceous vegetation that grows on an annual basis. That doesn't grow in the wintertime because it dies off but in the summertime that type of vegetation may grow on these bars. So just because you see some vegetation on a gravel bar does not mean that that gravel bar is outside your bank full channel. In fact, the presence of simply annual or herbaceous vegetation suggests that that, pro that area probably is within your bank full channel. It's the perennial woody vegetation that will not be growing within your bank full channel. So as a result, that's what you should focus on when trying to use vegetation as an indicator of bank full channel width. The third and final indicator we'll talk about today for use in determining bank full channel width is sediment. And specifically we want to discuss the size of sediment both in the channel bed and in the stream banks as an indicator. You'll see here in front of me that we've got relatively coarse sediment, larger sediment sizes in the channel. We see pieces like this that would be considered cobble sized pieces and we also see sediments such as this that would be considered gravel. In the middle of the channel the reason that you see that course of material is because there's higher energy out there and the higher energy of the stream really keeps that material coarse in size. But as you move away from the middle of the channel, these lower energy environments transport and deposit finer material. Probably can't see this real easily, but in my hand you can see there's smaller sand 
finer grain sediments that are deposited here along the margin of the channel. As we move further and further away, you can see that not only does the, the sediment size decrease, but we start getting organic matter accumulation along the edge of the channel. And that's very important. Where we start losing the actual sediment, the sands, the silts, the gravel, and the cobble, and we start getting organic matter accumulations, that's an indicator that you're losing the frequent scour that's typically associated with that bankful channel. So I'll move here a little bit closer, and you might be able to see the type of organic matter that I'm talking about. I'm here a little bit closer to the edge of the stream bank, and you can see, again, in front of me we have the, the material that's transported and deposited by the water moving through the channel itself. Whereas here we're starting to get vegetation, we're getting mosses, and we have small twigs, branches, and leaves, organic matter essentially accumulating here along the edge of the channel. When we transition from this coarser material that's transported and deposited from the channel into this organic matter, that's another indicator that you should be looking at in terms of helping you to determine where the bankful channel edge is. One of the things to keep in mind when talking about bankful channel is that rarely will you rely on just one of those indicators that we've talked about. Rarely will you rely simply on stream bank shape, vegetation, or sediment as your primary indicator. Oftentimes we'll use what we call a weight of the evidence approach where we try to piece the evidence together and we often rely on two or even three indicators to help us determine exactly where that bankful channel edge is. In this particular case we talked about stream bank shape where the gently sloping bank comes up to the flatter beginning of the active floodplain in this general vicinity where my hand is. It's also in this area that we see a change in vegetation from the grasses and the annual herbaceous vegetation to the woody vegetation such as the elderberry and the alder that we talked about earlier. And then finally, the sediment story. We're looking at coarser sediments with some finer sediments here in front of me and at this point we start getting into the organic matter which again is an indication of a lower energy environment. So at this particular location, the edge of the bankful channel would be about where my hand is. Now, we're ready to measure the width of the stream. Jeff places one end of the tape at a point where the three indicators previously discussed identify the bank full edge. Note how the tape is stretched perpendicular to the stream channel direction. He continues to a similar point on the other side of the stream previously identified as the bank full edge. Failure to establish these points might lead one to underestimate the bank full width. In this case, a stream that might have been estimated at 20 feet or so actually has a bank full width of approximately 34 feet. Remember that determining the average bank full width will necessitate several measurements at 50 foot intervals along the stream channel for a distance of 500 feet. Jeff is measuring off a 50 foot segment where he can then take another perpendicular width measurement after he examines the stream edge for any of the three indicators previously discussed. When Jeff reaches the 50 foot mark on the tape upstream from his first width measurement, he will mark this point as the next place to measure the width. When sufficient points have been measured, they will be averaged to get an average bankful width. 